All right, fans of music, welcome back. It's Dave, the real music observer, observing real music in real time for real people just like you right there, just like me right here. So in Jonathan Cain's new book, Don't Stop Believing," the man, the myth, the band, the legend, the cosmos, um, of course, I'm doing my own title. Uh, he talks about how Steve Perry was a lot like a racehorse. <clears throat> it's an analogy, but <laughs> but to compare Perry, you know, sometimes when you uh, slap a racehorse around enough and after a while it gets used to being slapped around, it's not going to want to jump anymore, meaning, you know, jump over the hurdles and so forth. Wow, holy crap, Batman, there's a tortured analogy, and I'm sure Steve Perry is out in California somewhere thinking to himself, now... They're comparing me to a horse, you know? Steve Perry and Mr. Ed, right on the same plane, you know? Uh, is the book accurate in saying that? Yes, but you know, the analogy obviously is a bit tortured and uh, I probably, if I was throwing that at the editor and the editor came back and said, hey, you know, maybe we should come up with some different wording here rather than describing Perry as a horse, but I guess it helps the listeners or the readers kind of absorb, uh, you know, this notion of Perry being a thoroughbred. Uh, what I find really odd about this is that uh, they realize this now, like, you know, 30 years after the fact or whatever, that maybe, <clears throat> just maybe, we, um, we tortured Steve a little bit too much. And then we hear, you know, the little San Francisco concert, 91, what is it, that... Um, Graham, what's that guy's name, that, that big promoter, they had this concert in San Francisco and Perry and Sean and Kane came out and they did a few songs. And Kane purposely says, and yes, we had to perform these songs in a lower key. Almost to say like, Steve is already just falling apart and we brought him out there and you know got him to sing and so forth. And uh, But <clears throat> he was a mess and Yes, he was probably still a mess from the stuff that you guys did to him in the 1980s. Okay, remember the racehorse thing? I mean, to even mention that, to say that, is almost like, huh, well, Steve really couldn't sing anyway. Really? So why did you go and, oh, and we also hear about how For the Love of Strange Medicine didn't sell very well. No, oh, it didn't, didn't sell as well as his first solo album. Um, Sold better than any album Jonathan Cain has ever released, ladies and gentlemen. How's that? Um, wow. Slap. You know, there's the racehorse for you. I hit that racehorse too many times, and he says things that he shouldn't say, Jonathan Cain. So we get to we get to trial by fire. Why did you even have him come back? Why did you even uh, agree to be back with this guy if he couldn't sing anymore? and you're disparaging his second solo album and so forth, just didn't sell, really? How about the music climate had changed a lot, all right? How about the fact that, you know, uh, the record label may have not given the album proper support? Do I like Street Talk better? I do, but as time wears on, uh, I'm starting to really appreciate the material on For the Love of Strange Medicine because uh, Steve took a lot of chances on that album and some of the chances paid off and some of them didn't. And as time goes on, uh, you understand music better and you understand maybe what he was trying to do. So to wrap up this quick little video, Jonathan Cain compares Steve Perry to a horse. And I thought that that was kind of weird. And you may say, well, why are you doing a video about it? Because it's interesting. And you should get the book. I'm encouraging people to read this book, whether you like Jonathan Cain or not, because you'll get some insight uh, you can do what I did. You can listen to the Audible version, courtesy of Amazon, and uh, you get a membership or whatever, and then you can cancel it at any time and so forth. So that way you can fast forward through the stuff where uh, you're just um, hearing a lot of self-indulgent things like, you know, <clears throat> I wrote this song even though it was um, Perry, Sean, and Kane. Don't stop believing. That's how... It should have had a little <laughs> subtitle in the, instead of the man, the myth, the band, the cosmos, all that stuff, it should have had a little subtitle that said something like, um, <laughs> written by Perry, 
Sean and Kane in parentheses underneath the don't stop believing because that's the way it appears on the 45. <clears throat> Just letting you know. All right, I'll be back with uh, more insights and more goofiness. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs>